Welcome to the transducer and the instrumentation virtual lab. Now we are moving towards the experiment number three that is study of AC and DC bridges. For the DC bridges we have got the two options that is Reed Stone Bridge and the Carey Foster Bridge. And for the AC bridges we have got the, these many options that is Maxwell Bridge, Wiens Bridge, Hayes Bridge, the Shorties Bridge and the Scaring Bridge. So in this way we will be learning about the different DC and the AC bridges. Now this window will tell you exactly how the different bridges look like and it will also show you the real images of those components which have been used here in the circuit building of the different bridges so in order to start the experiment first of all we have to click this run button so that our experiment turns out to in the run mode and now after select putting this run mode on and now you can select the different components like if i've selected capacitor if i want to look like how the exact uh, exactly the capacitor looks like we can select the capacitor from here and we can watch that image from here and suppose I want to look like how the inductor looks like you can select the inductor and you can s let it look like here and uh, voltmeter again so in this way we will be we can able to see the, these many five components through this drop down menu now we have to start the experiment because Keep in mind that you can watch these images of the components up only when your experiment will be in the off mode. Now, as you will click this on button, you will be in the state to do your experiment. Now, as I click this run button, this on button, this ID gives us the indication that now you, you start your experiment because that turns out to green. Now, for the V-Stone Bridge, we have got a lot many options. Like we can select the for the calibrating R1, R2, R3, and R4, where the numbers decide that at which position these resistors have been attached in the Wheatstone bridge, at which branch exactly. Now, as I click, as I have got the options for the calibrating R1 as I've chosen, then you can select these bridges. Suppose if I if I select here to be this way, we can make it to suppose I make it two only, two ohm. That was been decided now you can have or you can change this resistors value now you can all you have also had options we can select the input voltage that has been the supply voltage you can change, select the supply voltage and the range is given from 0 to 10 so that I can select the input voltage range from 0 to 10 volt and you can change this input voltage uh, as this and as I have one, you see that now your bridge is in the balance state. And at this balance state, the value of the resistor R1 is 1 ohm. You can again fix these values. Suppose I fix it to be, now if I change this it to be, suppose 6. Now again, if I want to choose the different, uh, at what position this bridge will be in the balance state. So you can change this resistor through the slider as as it will be at 3 ohm this bridge will again balance so this is just an indication that now your bridge is balanced so at that position at that balance position your r1 will be 3 ohm similarly we have we have to do it for the resistor r2 and uh, suppose if this is only the condition that shows that uh, when resistor r1 is 3 ohm you have selected and 2 ohm for r3 and 4 ohm for this you again see that r2 is 6 ohm so at 6 ohm when the R2 will be at the 6 ohm it will tell you about this now the bridge is balanced that is voltage output at cross VVD is 0 similarly for R3 you can have any other condition you can fix to be 1 you can make it to be 1 by 3 you can just make it to as 3 as R2 and you can make it to change suppose if I, if I make it change to 3 and now if you want to change this position as I change this position we get that for R3 we are getting R3 to be 2 ohm in the balanced state and similarly we are getting the value and we are getting the voltage across voltmeter to be at 0 now similarly we can go for the calibration R4 we can fix these these values and we can change the slider of R4 and we can have the different values of resistors but we will be getting those that value of resistor where the bridges are balanced so we get the 3 ohm to be at this condition 3 ohm is the resistor which is attached to the fourth branch when it will be 3 ohm your bridge will be at balanced state now for carry foster bridge 
you can select the different again you can fix these values of r1 r2 r3 and r4 and you can change this to be slider and as you will be changing this slider you will be getting this output voltage so in this we will understand how the Wheatstone bridge and the carry foster bridge works like so now we will be moving towards the ac bridges because we have gone through this ac uh, for the dc bridges of uh, Wheatstone and the carry foster bridge now for the ac bridge we have the max bridge weems bridge hayes bridge d shorty's bridge and the skiing bridge as the options now for the maxwell bridge now this is the circuit diagram for the maxwell bridge where c1 is the capacitor lx is a unknown inductor value unknown inductor whose value is unknown now we can change for this purpose you can fix for c1 r1 as per your own desired value you can change and as of i as i am clicking up you will see that at the position at, at your choice position you will see the output of the inductance and the resistance that has been attached in the fourth branch you can, now you can just shift your capacitor of c1 value from any from you can choose the value of this capacitor any you can choose from 0.01 .01 farad to 0.1 farad and at the different value of the capacitor you will be getting the different values of your inductance and the resistors so in this way you understand how the maxwell bridge is used for the calculation of the unknown value of the inductor so now we'll be moving to the wheatstone bridge now this is the wheatstone bridge and this is the circuit diagram for the wheatstone bridge and this you will see that the current is traveling in this way it is being shown through this arrow now here we have now you can select you can change the value of c3 that c3 is here and you can change the value of c1 as per your own desire and as we will changing the value of the c1 and c3 you will getting a correspondingly frequency output and this is the frequency for the unknown frequency source whose frequency is unknown so you are getting 8 to be the frequency and that is also been shown through this sinusoidal signal you can count the number of waves in one whole cycle so you will be understanding that how the frequency is measured when we change the value of this C3 and C1 that is capacitor C3 and capacitor C1 now again if you change you will see that again you will be getting the different value of the frequency that now 7 is coming now again if I make it low you will see that the frequency component is again changing so in this way we understand through the Wien's bridge that how exactly that Wien's bridge is being used and how the frequency measurement is being done through the by the use of this beam spread it has got a wide applications for the measurement of the frequency now we will be moving towards the haze bridge now this is the haze bridge and this is the circuit diagram for the haze bridge and now you fix these resistance r2 and the r3 to some point and you can change this capacitor value as you will be changing this capacitor value you will see at different capacitor value you will be getting different inductance value so Hayes bridge is also a sort of bridge through which we can calculate the value of the inductance that is L1 as shown here again if I if I make it to somewhere here so you will be getting again an inductance value here so that is also been utilized in order to find out uh, in order to find the value of the inductance now this is the D shorties bridge and this is the circuit diagram for the D short is rich here you can choose any value you can fix suppose we fix the value of R3 that is to be 6 ohm and we fix this to be 2 ohm and we can change this value at the different value of the capacitor C1 we will be getting the different value of this capacitor C2 so up till now we have gone to that Maxwell and the Hayes bridges for the inductance measurement and D short is bridges for the capacitor measurement the value of the capacitor we can know by changing the capacitor and by changing the resistance value we can just easily find out what is exactly the capacitor C2 value is you can again change these values and you can have with the different values of this capacitor C2 and this is the meter indicator which will tell you exactly what is the value of that capacitor in C2 so this is was the D shorties bridge and this is for the skiing bridge this is again a circuit diagram for the skiing bridge 
Now again, you can fix these resistance value to some desired value, and you can fix. Suppose we want to fix the C2 also. If you fix the C2, that's this is, and you can change this value of the C4. Now, as you will change this value of C4, you will be getting the correspondingly R1 and C1. Now R1 in ohm, this is 4.6 ohm, and uh, C1 is 0 0.055 farad. At this position, when you have set the value for C2, C4 to be this, and for R2 and R3 to be this. Now, if you want to change any one of these, like uh, if I want to change the C2, now corresponding to the change in C2, we'll be getting the different values of R1 and C1. And so, in this way, we understand how exactly these bridges works like, and how these bridges are being used for uh, the purpose. Uh, like uh, like Wheatstone and Kate Foster bridges are for the you know, they are very much used for the signal conditioning and for the AC bridges like Maxwell and the Hayes bridge are used for the inductance measurement and uh, the shorties and the skierings bridge is used for the capacitor measurement so in this way we learn out the different purposes of the, the bridges now suppose if you are over with your experiment then there is off button as I as you will click this off button now if you will perform anything you won't be able to get the values out of it so as you click off you will see that again your this window will be start showing you about the real images of the component and you can again have once you you can again have the look of the components which you are exactly using like if for the capacitor you can have this to be as the capacitor value so in the last i like to conclude by seeing this key if you won't have understand that how exactly your bridges uh, purpose and what is the bridges and why they have been used so you can perform this experiment you can go through the documentation parts and you can have you can read it twice thrice as many number of times as you want and you can have your basics to be right and you can understand how these bridges are very important in our uh, life so in this way we have a good knowledge of bridges and I hope you have to you would have understand a good knowledge of this bridge and suppose if you didn't understand then again this procedure is there you can follow this procedure and you can perform the experiment as many number of times as you want so in the last I like to conclude that up till now you would have understand the bridges concept and thank you for listening this audio tutorial and thank you once again